His Word. Welcome to Rock Solid Lesson 4. Now that we know a little bit of what the being of God is like, and there is much more that could be discovered, in your study last week, we moved to the character and personality of God. What is God like? And what did you discover? The first thing uh, that you should have discovered is that God is wise. 1 Corinthians 2, 6-8 says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. God's wisdom is beyond our understanding. We are finite creatures. We can only catch glimpses of the infinite wisdom. Paul uses the example of the cross. Even today, people mock and call the cross foolishness. They laugh at the idea that the death of one person almost 2,000 years ago can bring salvation to anyone who accepts it for all of time. It wasn't understood in Jesus' day either. Yet God in his wisdom knew that it was the only method that would meet the requirements of divine justice and still allow divine mercy to be made available. Even in our own lives, things happen that don't make sense. We don't understand. We simply have to trust to the wisdom and goodness of God. He has everything worked out perfectly. As we saw in a previous lesson, God only does perfection. Not only is God wise, but you should have discovered that God is also merciful. In Ephesians 2, 4-5 we read, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. For it is by grace you have been saved. It is amazing. God created us, set us in a perfect world, and poured out his love on us. Then we rebelled against him, rejected everything that he had done, set about destroying his creation and spitting in his face. Every one of us. In perfect justice, God could have wiped us out or sent us immediately into the dungeon of hell. Instead, he continued to pour out his love on us and provided a way through Christ that we could receive his mercy. We didn't even want his mercy, but he gave it anyway. Think about how God has been merciful in your life. Along with being merciful, God is compassionate. Psalm 86.15 records, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Compassion is a feeling of distress and pity for the suffering or misfortune of another, often with the desire to alleviate it. The pain and suffering in this world are not part of God's original design. They are a consequence of our own rebellion and attempts to live life independent of God, which is not how life was designed. God feels the pain of those suffering. He sent Jesus to cure the root cause, and he works through his people to help those who are suffering, which is why Christians have been responsible by far for, the build, for building more hospitals, schools, orphanages, and ministries to the poor than anyone else. It's the compassion of Christ, compassion of God, working through his people to minister to others. Now in compassion, there's also an element of anger. Anger against anyone who would harm the one cared for. God's anger will bring judgment and justice. There will come a day when pain and suffering will be vanquished, and life will be as God designed it to be far better than anything that we could imagine. In the meanwhile, we know we love and serve a God who is compassionate and understands and experiences our hurts and sufferings along with us. Finally, we see that God repents or grieves. In Genesis 6, verse 6, we read, The Lord regretted or repented that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Now, this may seem like a contradiction from what we studied earlier. We know from our study of the attributes of God that God is immutable, he never changes, and omniscient, he has all knowledge. Therefore, God can never change his mind. When we read in scripture that the Lord repented or was sorry that he did something, it doesn't mean that he changed his mind. It does mean that he experienced pain. A parent whose child has severely disappointed them may at that moment wish or repent that he had ever had a child. But in the big picture, he wouldn't change his mind, wouldn't change it, even if he could. 
Jeremiah 18, 8 to 10 is also an interesting selection of verses on this topic. It says, And if that nation, I warn, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good that I had intended to do for it. Now it sounds as if God changed his mind, but that is not the case. What changed was the people's actions. God may have declared judgment on a people or nation, remember Jonah, uh, but if they truly repent and turn from their wicked ways, God may in mercy change the judgment. The opposite is also true. God may have declared blessing because a people or a nation was walking according to his law, but if they rebel, then that blessing may be turned into judgment. That in no way makes God mutable. In his justice or his mercy, he is simply changing the consequences to fit the actions. Although I have not listed it as a separate category, we can see from the above, and we'll see again in the next few lessons, that God has emotions. Unlike us sometimes, God is not controlled by his emotions. Nevertheless, he knows all the unsinful emotions that we experience, and he experiences them to a greater depth than we will ever know. Yet his actions are based on his wisdom, knowledge, and compassion, not on his emotions. Now, in the verses that we've listed this week for you, you should be able to discover at least four more characteristics of God. So go to your study, keep up the good work, and I'll see you next week. God bless.